In this problem, we have a bicycle that's rolling downhill. It's got two wheels and a frame. that's attached to the wheels at their centers. We're asked to find the kinetic energy of the bicycle. We're told that the whole thing has a linear velocity of 15 kilometers per hour. So we'll separate these into two, well, three different objects. The frame shown here that attaches to the wheels has a linear velocity v equal to 15 kilometers per hour and if we convert that that's 4.17 meters per second the frame isn't rotating it's just translating if we look at the wheels, however, and we'll look at one wheel just to remind ourselves of what's going on. The wheels are in contact with the ground and they have the same linear velocity at their centers of gravity because they're attached to the frame. So that VG equals 4.17 meters per second. But the wheels are also rolling they have to be rolling in order to be moving because there's no slip at the point of contact with the ground. Now, if we want to figure out what their angular velocity is, we're going to set up an XY coordinate system here. And we remember that if there's no slip, there's no velocity. So this point is the IC. So we can write the relationship VG equals omega cross R G with respect to the IC. VG is going to be in the I hat direction equals negative omega in the K hat direction, the way we've drawn it, cross R the radius in the J hat direction. We end up with Vg in the i hat equals omega r in the i hat, or Vg equals omega r. We can calculate omega here uh, equal to Vg over r equals 4.17 meters per second over our radius 0 0.35 meters. And that gives us 11.91 rads per second. But we'll find actually we don't need to figure out omega to solve this problem, although we do need to know this relationship. So we can make an expression for the kinetic energy total of the bicycle is going to be the kinetic energy of the frame plus two times the kinetic energy of a wheel. And so that's going to be equal to one half the mass of the frame times the velocity squared. And that's going to be VG, same so as the center of the wheel, plus two times the linear kinetic energy, one half the mass of the wheel times the velocity at the center of gravity, the wheel squared, plus one half IG omega squared. So we need to know the mass moment of inertia of the wheel about the center of gravity. We're told to approximate the wheels as thin rings. If we look in our table for mass moment of inertia, we'll be able to find IG of the wheel is a thin ring. It's going to be mass of the wheel times the radius of the wheel squared. So we're going to sub that into our equation. We'll have one half mass of the frame VG squared plus two times one half mass of the wheel VG squared 
plus one half times mass of the wheel, r squared, omega squared. r squared omega squared is going to be vg squared based on this equation right there. So we'll write that out again. One half mass of the frame, vg squared, plus two times, and now we've got a one half mass of the wheel vg squared and a one half mass of the wheel vg squared. That's gonna be mass of the wheel vg squared times one. And we can do one more thing to simplify this. We're gonna pull out vg, so we have one half mass of the frame plus two times mass of the wheel vg squared. And that'll be the final expression we'll sub our numbers into. So you can see we didn't have to calculate out omega in this particular case. So we're gonna sub in our numbers. One half, we're told the mass of the frame is 10 kilograms, plus two times the mass of the wheels, we'll, we're told those are three kilos each, times 4.17 meters per second, all squared. And so the kinetic energy total for the bicycle is going to be 191.3 joules. Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and material at Mechanics Map.